and cookie decorating tutorials. And today, I thought I would just do some of the baking that I have to do for this week. I have a lot of different, I wanna say orders, but it's really, I'm just doing some favors for some friends. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of really specific baking, so not necessarily things that I planned out for a video, but what I have to do because I said that I would do these favors. So today I'm just going to be rolling out some cookies and chatting with you guys. So if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Hi there, and I will um, I will answer them as best as I can. I will switch you guys over so you can see what I am doing, and I'm just gonna be rolling out some cookies and chatting with you guys. So if you have any baking business questions or recipe questions or questions about decorating cookies, cakes, cupcakes, go ahead and ask them in the chat, and I will do my best to keep up with them. Hi, Lacey. About how you learned how to carve cakes. Yeah, I mean, it would be, I, I can definitely do a carved cakes video. I've done a, quite a few of them now, but I can probably, um, I'm actually gonna be doing a pretty big one for my son's birthday. I realized his birthday was a while ago, but I am going to be um, doing one that is going to be for July because restrictions are lifting. How long do you give yourself to decorate cookies? Well, um, these cookies are going to be due for Friday. So I'm baking them now. I'm going to freeze them, even though they're they're gonna be used within, um, within a few days, which would actually be totally fine if I left them out. And when you're doing orders of hundreds, that sometimes happens, but just to make sure they're super, super fresh, I am going to leave them um, in the freezer and I have some projects that I have to get done. So I'll probably do it, Probably I'll do it all in one day, the decorating. And how can you explain how you learned in the next carving video? I sure can. Um, but really, it really is just about trial and error when it comes to something like carved cakes. All right, I'm gonna bring you guys up here on the chat so I can see it as I'm filming there. Oh, no, that's not right. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me put that on mute. Okay, so I am going to start by rolling out my sugar cookies here. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying the videos. How do you develop recipes? Well, I am the first to admit that I am not a huge uh, recipe maker. I really started out with a few base recipes and then I just kind of went with it from there. There's a few tweaks that I made to recipes. And like I actually mentioned before, the only recipe that is really my recipe is this sugar cookie recipe that I use um, quite frequently. And some of my filling recipes too are my recipe. or no before you bake them. It really depends. So my particular sugar cookie recipe does fine if you um, don't do a whole lot of refrigeration beforehand, but some recipes will spread quite a bit. And there are some recipes that are no spread as well. So it really just depends on the recipe that you're using. Well, it's all to do with the butter and flour ratio. But whenever I'm doing things like circles, I do like to put it in the fridge just for that little extra bit of reassurance um, because circles are the one thing that you need a little bit more perfect. Okay, I opened up my parchment today new and I think they gave me one that was like not very good because <laughs> it's like kind of taped together so the integrity of the box is wrecked. So I have to uh, cut this over myself. I'm so glad to see so many of you guys here. I know sometimes when I do it a little bit later in the day, I don't, um, I don't see as many people. Okay, I am just preparing my pans here. And I will 
must say, I have tried this with the silicone mats instead, the non-stick slip mats, and it doesn't, it doesn't bake my cookies as evenly. Those are better suited for macarons. So I always stick to parchment when I'm doing this. You can also do it without any parchment whatsoever. Again, I find I don't get as even baking when I do that. So my oven right now is preheated to 350 degrees. And I did refrigerate this dough. I went, I made the dough and then I went out for a couple hours. Um, so it has been sitting out for maybe about 20 minutes or so. It's pretty, I have air conditioning in my house, so it's pretty cold still. Hi, Savannah, nice to see you. I'm at work, I, I'm at work. I love to watch your videos, I'm from Toronto. Always love to see a fellow Canadian. What recipe do you use for your sugar cookie dough? Um, I have my recipe actually, If after this live, if you wanna go and check out classic sugar cookie recipe, you'll be able to find it. Right. This is the tedious part, like just getting everything ready to go. Oh, by the way, if I could go back in time, I would buy everything like this. This half sheet is so perfect. It fits everything really, really nicely. You can also do like shallow um, sheet cakes on here too. So highly recommend if you're looking to invest in some pans. These are by that Daddy O's, I believe. I have some, my 30,000 subscriber video is coming out tomorrow and I am so thrilled you guys to share it with you. I know that normally for my subscriber milestones, I've shown you guys like, oh, I bought cakes from two different bakeries and blah, 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 blah. But this time around, I am doing something a little bit different and I am super, super thrilled to share that with you guys. It is a little bit of a longer video too. All right, so let's get rolling these out. And I must say that I feel like I roll these out in kind of an unorthodox way. <laughs> but it's just the system that I developed over the years. So I feel like I'm being a little bit over ambitious with how many different cookie cutters I have here. I need to cut out 68 cookies and I just, I don't know if this is truly going to make 68, so we might have to stop around 50. But I ran out of sugar, if you can believe it. So I've got to put an order for a grocery shop. You'll notice as well, I'm very, very generous with my flour here. Um, a lot of recipes will incorporate more flour in the first place, and then we'll do a very lightly floured surface. I always find it works better for me this way to add the um, to add the flour later. I apologize, my friends, if you hear my son crying. He has to go to bed, so I don't think he's pleased about that. <laughs> Can you show how to wrap sugar cookies into a bouquet? Oh, of course. Do you want to show everybody your Spider-Man? Do you want to show people your Spider-Man? <coughs> We're not happy. Okay. I love you, buddy. Say good night. Good night. <laughs> okay. We'll cut to the chase. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he was definitely not thrilled about bedtime. <laughs> Oh yeah, Bernadette, hands down, the best baking sheets. And I wish, there's so many things that I continue to bake with and I continue to use in my videos that um, some of you have asked me about or you think that those are things that I would recommend, but not so. I just, I use them because I'm, I'm a very, I don't like to waste type person. So since I've invested in those products already, I continue to use them. 
but there are so many things that I would rather replace. I just haven't because I, like I said, like to be resourceful, like to stick by what I already have. Okay. Now don't worry if you get lines in your sugar cookies like this. It's no big deal. Okay. So I am going to start with my smaller batch first. Yeah, <laughs> I think he just wants a cookie. <laughs> Who knows? He's been kind of cranky the last few days. I think it's just because, you know, it's been a lot of like staying in obviously during this time. And now we're finally getting out again. So it'll be good. <laughs> okay. I've been wanting to see your cookies. Do you just eye the thickness? Yes, I eye the thickness, and it's pretty much the same every time. I am a thin cookie person. So as you can see, I've done them pretty thin. That's the way I like to do them. You might want them a little bit thicker. Totally up to you. Um, I have to do some math here. <laughs> I've got four cutters divided by... Now, I will say when I was running um, my baking business full-blown, I really did, um, I, I measured it a little bit closer, just so that everything was a little bit more equal, but not being too big. Uh, yes, I like this rolling pin, and I tried to find it, and I couldn't. Um, when I went to go look for it again. It's just a Wilton rolling pin. So if you guys like this one, look up Wilton rolling pins. I, for when I'm doing cookies, I don't like to use the ones without handles. I find it so hard to control. I find I get so much indenting. Whereas I find it a little bit easier with fondant, but that's because you can use like fondant smoothers to get things a little bit more neat and tidy. ones are going to be um, blippy themed. I don't know if you guys know blippy, but if you have children, you probably know blippy. <laughs> and there will be full tutorials on how to decorate these cookies as well. I will be decorating these in um, scheduled videos, but those videos probably won't come up for a little bit because I have a fun little series in celebration of the 30,000 subscribers. And I missed all my other milestones. Like I don't think I did I think I did 20,000. I can't remember what the last one I did was, but I know that I missed some. Like I was planning on doing it at 25,000 because I felt like that was more, I don't know, of a rounded milestone. I know there's no rules. You can celebrate whatever you want to, but yeah, I kept missing it because it was just so um, busy and it was just going up so fast. So I missed that one. So you'll notice that I did put my cookies fairly close together. I know that they're not gonna spread, but let's say I was really, really nervous about spreading and I hadn't used this recipe before, I would definitely pop this into the freezer or fridge just for that little bit of extra reassurance. Then once you figure out how your cookie recipe is going to react in your oven, because all ovens react a little bit differently, then you can go ahead and place them closer. And these are gonna go into the oven for 12 minutes. Okay, I'm going to finish up that. As I was a few minutes after you started, is your dough chilled and it looks like you wrapped it in saran wrap? I did, yeah, it's all wrapped in clean wrap. Let's do a few 
And really, like, if you can, I don't know if my camera's picking this up, but you can see a few little line indents. Honestly, for sugar cookies, it really doesn't matter if you're going to decorate them. we're probably not going to make all the sugar cookies that I need to make, but that is okay. And uh, I do want to point out that I did have um, brown sugar, but I just didn't have granulated sugar. And you, in this recipe, you cannot sub brown sugar and granulated sugar. Has to be, um, has to be granulated because it'll change your texture of your cookie and it won't roll out properly. So just a little pre-warning there. Thinking of starting a baking YouTube, is it worth it? Do you think it's, it is better on families with kids? I cannot tell you enough how much YouTube has afforded me time with my children because before I was teaching piano and I had about 30 students and you know I had to go to piano lessons when I was doing that on top of my full-time job teaching elementary music. And then I also was making cakes and cookies on the side. <laughs> it was just, it was, I had no time. And then um, when I switched all of that and I had to, and I stopped teaching piano and then I switched and I didn't do any more baking orders and I switched to YouTube instead, it just afforded me that flexibility of being at home with the kids as opposed to having to go out for lessons and go to people's houses. Um, and I didn't have that stress of, oh, got to meet that deadline of um, cookie orders. Like for me, just this, this cookie order deadline for my friends, um, which is really, I mean, they're the sweetest. They're not really going to care what I make for them as long as it's a cookie. It, even that is like, that's enough for me of, of something that I need to, um, need to be committed to. So I like the flexibility in the commitment, but it is a lot of, You've got to make sure you hit the ground running or else your channel just might not catch on. So that is the only thing. In the beginning, you really have to make sure that you are consistent. Um, hello, love your videos and first time on live. What is the recipe for the sugar cookies you are making? Have you tried powdered sugar? Okay, so the recipe is going to be found in the classic sugar cookie recipe on my channel. Um, it's very clear to how to make it, and I give you all my tips and things like that. Um, and yeah, have you tried powdered sugar? I have tried powdered sugar. It also doesn't work as well. So <laughs> definitely 10 out of 10 recommend granulated sugar. Okay, so the next set that I have to make, I finished that flippy set. The next set that I have to make is graduation cookies, and I'm doing a one smart cookie. Which I always wanted to do that, but nobody ever ordered it. So I get to call the shots, so I'm going to do that set. You want to be really careful, by the way, when you have sugar cookies that have really, really small um, indents like this, because... If you're not careful and you don't have cold enough dough, it'll you'll lose this tassel every single time. Would you ever start selling cakes again? Okay, so before when I was asked this a few months ago, I said, you know, never say never. But I really, I, I'm really starting to lean to no. I just don't think I can. Um, I feel like when you are making cakes for business, you're often being dictated by what your customers ask of you. And I do think that is a very good skill to develop, being able to answer to other people and uh, being able to fulfill whatever it is they're asking of you. But I am just not in that place where I want what I, to be my creative outlet to be controlled, you know? guys saw my haul video by the way where my friend's bakery she gave me a whole bunch of stuff this is one of the cutters from there absolutely love 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 that one i'm interested in starting a cupcake 
businesses, but really confused on pricing cupcakes and cakes. What would be an average price for basic cupcakes? So here, oh, see, I just want to show you this, guys. This is what happens because my dough is getting a little bit warmer, so it's staying more in there. So I'm going to pause on that one. I'm going to continue on with the cutters that I know are going to be super easy peasy. Then when I have my cold dough that's still in the fridge, I will use it to do the bread half. Sorry about that. That was a little bit of a tangent. Um, so the pricing of cupcakes in general here is about $3 to $3.50 per just standard cupcake. Those are quite large cupcakes, I will say. So highly recommend if you are going to be selling cupcakes as part of your business that you invest in larger cupcake liners rather than just the standard. Because the standard, you get a really, really kind of shallow um, cake. And a lot of people want the beautiful decor, right? That's what makes it special. So definitely. Um, invest in the bigger ones and that way it helps justify the price would you take the size of cookies into consideration when pricing them um not not as much as you might think so for example let's take a look at this cutter and this cutter i'm going to charge if i were to charge i would charge the same amount for these. Like let's say this had some really fancy script on it and this was just a simple apple. I would still charge the same thing. It's the same amount of details, the same amount of work, even though these cutters are completely different sizes. So sometimes at this point I do like to throw in the um, cooled, sorry, the chilled dough so that I'm not constantly re-rolling the same piece, but I'm going to see if I can get just a few more out of this. Of course, you don't want to re-roll the same piece over and over because then you're going to get a tough cookie. already run your own baking business. I'm going to do a one smart cookie cookie. This one's going to be looking like a chocolate chip cookie. That's awesome. Everyday sprinkles, what kind of things do you make? I see you commenting a lot. So I just wanted, I was just curious. Ooh, in Arizona. Oh, in Australia. Amazing. I've always wanted to, because obviously during the time that I've had my YouTube channel, we haven't been allowed to travel. So I've always wanted to do like a YouTube kind of like traveling from bakery to bakery um, vlogs. I think that would be so fun. Yeah, totally Lisa, I can relate. Massachusetts. These are like so many places that I just haven't been to. You would love Australia. It's beautiful, but it's so cold at the moment. It's pretty cold here too. And like, I don't know what's going on with the weather, but it was, I think it's around like 12 degrees Celsius today. And which isn't very warm, but it was like raining. And then all of a sudden it was sunny and then it was hailing. It's just like springtime here in British Columbia. We just can't make up our minds, I guess. <laughs> Have you been to any of the cake or cookie conventions? I wanted to go so badly to like cookie con and those places, but it was like, I was either having babies or 
or um, we had trips to Disneyland planned instead. So I never got to do those things. Um, and I was also busy fulfilling cake orders and doing those things. So I feel like now is the time when I can really delve into the craft of doing new things and going to those conventions. My friend was supposed to go to a huge contest in Florida. Um, and then that was obviously canceled. So that was a sad time. So hoping probably 2022 plan for something like that. Hi, Felicia from Texas. Never been to the South ever. My sister creates cookies and we're so thankful for your video and knowledge. We're fairly new to the business too. Amazing. Buttercream custom cakes, cupcakes, and cakesicles. That's one thing I didn't really sell a whole lot of. Cakesicles. They weren't very in. It was all about the cake pop. But I'm a fan of cakesicles. You'll notice too, guys, when I'm rolling this out, I am moving around my, um, my sugar cookie dough to prevent sticking. And I'm very, very haphazard with this. Can overworked cookie dough be rescued? <sighs> kind of. If you mix it with cookie dough that has not been overworked, you can sometimes salvage it. Sugar cookie dough is forgiving, but like sometimes it's just too far gone and you'll end up, and you'll know it's too far gone because every time you try to roll it, it's just like crinkling and doing a whole bunch of weird things you don't want it to do. Just gonna grab those cookies out of the oven. They weren't quite done yet. In the beginning, I used to have so many issues with underbaked cookies. So now though, I can just look at them and tell when they're done and when they're not. I like to have a nice little edge of golden on my sugar cookies. I know some people don't like that. I personally do. Yes, we need someone to do that bakery travel tastings. Yeah, that'd be so fun. I have difficulty charging for my products. We have all been there. Do not fret. Do not worry. We've all been there. And what will happen eventually is that you will, um, by the way, I just took a little bite out of there with my cookie cutter to create that bitten cookie look. Um, but you will get to the point where you've got enough customers and you don't need to feel like you need to take on orders where you're not getting charged where you're not getting paid, sorry, your worth. You sure can use buttercream to decorate your sugar cookies. I will say you're going to be more limited in your designs, but there is a technique where you can get flat um, sugar cookie de decor done with buttercream. And I have plans to do that on my channel, but I was just noticing that not a lot of people were watching the cookie decorating ones, so I just kind of held off a bit. But if there's enough interest, I would totally be up for showing you guys how to do that technique. And also, of course, you can pipe beautiful um, decor. Like flowers and stuff. I always find that first tray takes a little bit of extra. Oh, she can't watch it in here. Uh, yeah, because then I'll 
it'll pick up. Okay. Do you like to use whippy frosting? Because my customers are in between. Some like buttercream and some like whippy. Ooh, can, can somebody explain to me what whippy is? Dear school students watching YouTube channel, <laughs> it's really, really cute. Sometimes some of my students will come up to me and be like, we're a part of the sweetie fam. <laughs> and they'll, they'll track me down and say that to me. Um, and I, I love it. They, they love, I mean, it's, it's really just a continuation of how I am at work too. It's just, I get to teach them about, um, you know, fun things like, like baking as opposed to just French and music. <laughs> so yeah, some of them do watch my channel. What time is it in Canada? Here in BC, it is eight o'clock in the evening. I love this time of year because it's late enough so that, you know, the, the house is calm, um, my son's in bed, but it's bright enough that I still feel like I have so much of the evening left. It's just a glorious time. I'm in love with this banner cutter. I know a lot of you guys, um, a lot of you guys told me a couple months ago what kind of jobs that you have outside of baking. And I was just so impressed with the amount of stuff that you guys do too. It's, it's amazing. So I want to show you these cookies and they've baked pretty nicely. They baked pretty flat. Don't worry about these tiny, tiny little bubbles. If you get them, it's not going to hinder anything. And as you, sorry, as you can see, I also have just a little bit of a golden edge, not too, too much, but just enough for that flavor. Have you ever tried palette knife cake decorating? Yes, I did it. Um, I did it the other day, actually. Um, it was a buttercream kind of flower that I did. It was a rose. It was really fun. Like, super, super fun to do. But I, you guys know me. I love to pipe. And I find that uh, is my happy place when I'm piping. So now I'm still going to set it to 12 minutes, even though I end up going about 15 minutes for those other ones. Can someone explain what it means, the Jennifer L. US $2? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, I've never seen that before. Is it possible? We both live in Canada, but it's a different time for me. Oh, yeah. Canada has different time zones. Um, is it possible to use anything other than buttercream, like stabilized whipped cream, to be more health conscious? On cakes, you totally could, um, but again, if you live in really humid climates, it's not the best, um, and it is just, it's harder to do more things with that, I find. Whippy is whipped cream frosting, but sometimes I find it difficult to work with. I'm thinking about using non-dairy whipped cream. Oh, I've never heard of using whippy at all. Um, I have worked with non-dairy whipped creams before, and it's fine. I just find you can't do as much with it. How far in advance would you generally have a cake order done before pickup and delivery? I try and make it done an hour before. Isn't that when someone donates your channel? Is it? Cool. Thank you, Jennifer. I didn't even know you could <laughs> donate to my channel. Um, I'm 14, but I want a baking shop now. You know what? I just mentored somebody in high school and that 
um, and we have this mentorship program here in the district. And she actually found me up on YouTube, didn't know I worked for the district. And she she is like around that age, a little bit older, and she's just doing amazing things with her bakery. So I say, if you want to do it, then by all means, do it. Don't, don't let your age stop you. I'm just going to be transferring some of my baked cookies. Normally I have this all kind of set up a little bit differently, but just with filming I have it just done this way. Now one thing about sugar cookies is of course you don't want to transfer until they're cool enough. Luckily with sugar cookies, it takes about one to two minutes for it to cool down enough for you to be able to lift them up and transfer them. If you notice that you have a little bit of shrinkage with your cookies, as in they turned out a little bit smaller than you thought, that just means that you um, rolled them out slightly too, too thin, and maybe you overworked your dough a little bit as well. So if that happens, that is the reason. How many of you guys have to like triple count your cookies? I always have to. I'm always so paranoid and afraid that I've missed one or forgotten some. Nothing is more horrifying to me when you have forgotten one cookie for like a really intricate order. Yes, they don't donate money to get a sticky comment that is easier to see, especially when chat is blowing fast. Ah, oh, cool. Do you have a recipe for tea cakes cookies? What's a tea cake cookie? I am learning so much from you guys' questions. I just made those graduation hats. I laid them on the tray and lightly pulled apart the tassel section, and the tassel would fall out easily without breaking. Yes, yes. And I actually have a double cutter of this, so I was wanting to... Um, I want to gift you guys some of the cutters because I really don't need like a whole bag full of cutters. So if you, you might have missed the video, but on my Patreon, um, or sorry, I'm going to create a Patreon on there. I'm going to be doing some, some giveaways of tools that I have extra of or that I don't need anymore. Um, so when I get that up and running, I will let you guys know. And hopefully you can follow me there too if you want some really... I'm going to be giving like really specified baking advice and baking questions that are more specific um, to your region and that's what I'm hoping to do on my Patreon. It's just too hard um, on Instagram and YouTube to, to really filter things so that's why I'm thinking of Patreon. What brand has the best piping tips and spatulas for frosting cakes? Um, the brand I think that has the best piping tips, um, you, uh, what, what brand do I use? Wilton is fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, but there's nothing special about them necessarily. I do like Azteco, I think that's what it's called. Um, they have good piping tips as well. But honestly, I don't think I've come across a piping tip that I don't really like. A lot of people talk about getting curling with their sugar cookies, especially with sugar cookie decorating. What I've done to combat that, what I've done to combat that is just um, is using tipless bags. It's changed my my whole cookie life. And, oh right, best spatulas for frosting cakes. I love metal spatulas. I don't really like to use anything else. There are those uh, buttercream smoothers that are like a hard, hard plastic, and those are, are okay, but I personally love the metal spatulas and the metal bench scrapers because you're going to be able to heat them and do the heating technique where you get really, really smooth buttercream edges. Why do you love baking so much? What inspired you? Somebody asked me this question the other day on my Instagram live. 
And um, I really have just always loved it. I have always loved it from the time I was a kid. And I would love to say it's because, oh, my mother did a bunch of baking with me and that's why I love it. But honestly, she was not a baker at all. Still is not, still is not into cooking or into being in the kitchen. She certainly likes eating my baked goods, but she, <laughs> she definitely is not a big, um, a big kitchen person at all. Um, I just grew up, my sister actually got me hooked on watching cooking shows. And then slowly that, and I still love that, and slowly that morphed into baking shows. You know, baking really, really hit the scene when Cake Boss came out, and then there was like a bunch of shows came out. And so that is how I really got into it. Just going to double check to see how many of these I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, sorry guys, I was just counting. I am doing well, thank you. I hope you are all doing well too. I know it has not been the best year, for sure, for many, many, many people. Is your favorite dessert? What is your favorite dessert that is connected with your culture? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, try to think. Ooh, I don't know what the Chinese name is for it. Something Pong, but it's um Dragon's Beard Candy. That has got to be my favorite dessert that is linked to um, linked to Chinese culture. If you don't know what Dragon's Beard Candy is, it's kind of, it kind of blew up on the scene, I feel like, a couple of years ago. And it was, it was so funny because all over the internet, it was like you'd see China Dragon's Beard Candy and Thousand Strand Candy. And I was just like, oh, you mean that stuff I've been having my whole life? <laughs> um, but it's really good if you've never had it. It is just like kind of like sugar that's been stretched and pulled. It has kind of the texture, kind of, of cotton candy, if I were to liken it to something like that. Um, and it is very, uh, it's filled with like nuts and sugar. And what I love about Chinese desserts is they're, they tend to not be very sweet. They're, they're a little bit more on the textural side than the sweet side. Tea cake cookies is an old school cookie that looks like a sugar cookie, but not as sweet. Oh, I will have to look that up and I will get back to you. I have a question. Is baking in a commercial kitchen better or home kitchen? Um, it depends. Like, if you're asking, is it easier to bake in a commercial kitchen or is it easier to bake in a home kitchen? It's completely different worlds. Like, baking in a commercial kitchen is very much like, it, it's like a trade because you're, you're lifting these huge buckets and you're counting things in vast amounts. Um, whereas with home baking, it's a little bit more relaxed, but you also run out of space and stuff like that. So that is my feeling about that. gonna wash my hands here and then I'll get to answering more of your questions. I 
pretty well with answering all the questions. Yeah, I think I answered most of them. Great. I, I wanted to tell you guys, I am currently working on updating my logo so that I can put out that merch because I, um, if you didn't hear or if you didn't see my community post, I am going to be putting out merchandise that is going to be um, on an apron and I can't seem to find any particular baking tools because I know that you guys were um, asking for merch that was baking tool related and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to source that. It's all about being able to... Um, to find someone that can make it and make it personalized as well. I want to show you guys here because we talked about circular cookies earlier. So as you can see, I didn't refrigerate these, but we're getting pretty good circles because I, I put those in when it was fairly cool still. Not certain if you already answered this because I'm late, but how long can I store a cookie batter like that in the freezer? Oh, you can store the cookie dough in the freezer for a very long time. I would say you're totally fine for up to a month in the freezer, no problem. I highly recommend, though, that you do, um, I find it easier to cut out the cookies and then freeze them that way. Cookies look amazing, why don't you know now? I would totally let you if you were here. <laughs> Do you have a schedule for these lives? No, I don't. The reason that actually that I'm going live is because I needed to um, I needed to cut these out and I find that in my videos, I really rush through these parts because a lot of people don't necessarily like just watching me cut out cookies. So this is a great opportunity for me to uh, chat with you guys while I'm doing something as well, giving you some tips. Yes, that's what it is. It's delicious. XOXO, thank you. <laughs> when I said XOXO, I just wanted to say Gossip Girl after that. Um, all right, let's get these cookies off too. Sorry guys, I'm just organizing my cookies over here. One thing I don't like about this cookie process is when you're switching between handling baked cookies and unbaked cookies. It's so much hand washing. And this year, oh my goodness, my hands have gone raw from all the hand washing. <laughs> Gonna get at some more trays here. I have these cooling racks as well. I'm not a huge, huge fan of them. Have you thought about offering live classes for cookie and cake projects? I have. So again, I feel like that's something that I might want to do on my Patreon, if I ever do that. I also find the lives take forever to process on YouTube for some reason. By the way, even when I'm cooling my cookies, I generally like to keep them with the same order or bunch. and stuff like that will work though just because I already upload quite frequently on YouTube but it might be something that I would just offer a little bit more in the summertime because I will have a lot more time
But yeah, I have about, um, I think I have seven teaching days left and then I'm going to be on summer break. So you guys will probably see a lot more lives from me as well on YouTube. If you were still selling, would you give discounts to a family and friend and how much would it be? <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, it really depends. Like if it's something that I don't necessarily have a passion for doing, I think that I would just charge regular price. Um, but if it's something that I am really passionate about doing, I might give them a small discount. But sometimes when you do that, it turns into always giving a discount, and that's where you get into the sticky situations. So if it was like, okay, that's your first order, then yeah, I would give a discount, no problem. But, um, you know, if they continually order from me, I think I would just leave it and charge them regular price. Yeah, my internet is going all crazy here. Let me see if I can just switch this net right here. It's kind of unfortunate because my kitchen has like the worst internet out of the whole house. <laughs> okay. So I got, um, I'm going to get my other can here. We are almost done, guys. It's incredible how long it takes to just bake, you know, a few cookies. Okay, I shouldn't say a few. This is quite a bit of cookies, but it, it's incredible how long it really takes to do something like this. And now I also cut out cookies in kind of a different way. Um, a lot of people recommend cover all the cookies and then take away the dough and then put the cookie on the sheet. Never worked out for me. So I always do it this way where I kind of use the cookie cutter edge to lift out the cookies. Oh, that's awesome, Danny Joe. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Like, I, I am honestly so humbled and blessed by the amount of support that I received. Like I I was I was a huge YouTube watcher before and I watched, you know, like the big, big channels like how to cake it. Um but you know for a small YouTube channel I really feel like I have grown quite a bit and I owe that all to you guys really. Without a YouTube audience, what is a YouTube channel? <laughs> And again, notice I'm turning it around. So this is where it gets to like that sketchy part. Like if I was really stressed, I, I remember back in the day, I'd be like, oh, I only have this much. I don't have to make another batch. Even though really making another sugar cookie batch takes about 15 minutes. But I always just had that feeling. I think I'm going to do another grab hat here. Oh, I'm also going to make it a point this summer to go and get an actual camera to film with. <laughs> My sister was saying to me the other day, she's like, you know, I'm really happy that your channel is getting really successful, but you've really got to up the quality of your videos. <laughs> and I agree. I really do think that I should up the quality of my videos. It's just been like... I've been really, really busy, and um, and also I wanted to do a lot of research, but I think I know now which camera that I'm going to get, so I can't wait until uh, I can really fix that quality for you guys. Who is my favorite YouTube cookier? Oh, you know, um, Sugar Bell. Love Sugar Bell. Oh, and I love Sweet Ams. She is probably one of my biggest inspirations for, like, whenever I saw her, like, video clips on Instagram and on YouTube, I would just be so in awe of what she did and what she could accomplish. And I am still, like, really impressed with her work.
which flavors do you include in your cookie dough? I was thinking about lemon. I keep it standard just because my clients at the time really loved my standard cookie recipe. So I really kept it very simple. But I do think if you are dedicating your, um, your baking business to sugar cookies, having flavoring is, is a great sell. Um, I would I've done free fried strawberries um, in the cookie dough, which is amazing. I've, I've done lemon as well. I make sure to use lemon zest when I'm doing it. Um, and then also put it in icing to really sell that. I also love doing Earl Grey too when I'm just making it for myself. Oh yeah, I love her too. And I'm part of her cookie group as well. I don't post a whole lot on there though. People, I just love looking at what other people are doing on there. Do a couple more. I'm gonna do one more three here. There's also some um, really great uh, Korean cookie channels too that I've seen that I'm like so just floored by. What grade do you teach? I'm a teacher as well. Um, I teach K to seven music, and I also teach this year I taught grade five to seven French. It's 11.30 in Florida right now. Oh, it's late. Although at 11.30 lately, I have been staying up too. <laughs> and what grade do you teach? What's the craziest order you felt okay turning down? Oh, uh, well, I can't recall a particular one. But I have turned it down anytime they ask me to do like, uh, I'll just leave it at like, if, if they've asked me to do like bachelorette cakes that I'm not, <laughs> that I'm not comfortable with, those are the types that I will turn down. But I never turned down like a giant carved cake, mainly because it really is hard to get those carved cake orders. When you do though, it's fun. How many times do you re-roll dough scraps? I re-roll until it's gone. Um, I, I definitely like to make sure that I try my very best to use up every little bit. And even if it gets a little bit more tough at the end. In general, I find my frosting really helps kind of make it nice and moist again. Juniors and seniors. Oh, good on you for, for high school. <laughs> I did do a little bit of high school theater and music as well. Um, and it was great. They were like very accomplished kids. They were awesome. But I definitely just, I love the younger set too. All right, guys. I think I'm, I'm almost there. Just have to do a few more. sure I don't miss anything. Okay. I just want to see how many I have here. Again, this is me recounting. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
46. Guys, I think I might have made it to the 50 mark. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> I did not think I would. Okay. Do you have an easy recipe for royal icing for beginners? Yes, my standard royal icing recipe is a no-brainer. You need one cup of icing sugar and one tablespoon of meringue powder, and then you just add in a little bit of water at a time. I would go maybe a tablespoon at a time until you get the consistency that you want. It's 8.33 here in Kelly. Yeah. California and British Columbia have no change whatsoever in time. That's what I love about going to Disneyland. All right. Sorry, guys, I'm just counting again. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. What was your most satisfying cake or cookie order you've done? Oh, so hard to say. There's been so many satisfying ones. Um... I feel, oh, there was this one set of cookies that I did that they, they were really, really pretty. They were these teacup cookies and they were so, so intricate. And my boss um, at the bakery had like really undercharged. I think she charged like $3.50 a cookie, which is just ridiculous for the amount of work it took to actually make the cookies at the bakery and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was incredible um, how much we undercharged for that, but I loved those cookies. They were so, so pretty. And then for cakes, I've done so many really beautiful cakes. Um, I'm trying to think. It's always so hard when I'm asked for a superlative of my work. <laughs> I really, I really have loved every single one of my children's cakes. I know that's not in order, but every single one that I've done for my kids, I've loved. Ah, I gotta re-roll that one. Do you do vegan cakes? I am, I don't do a whole lot. I have made a wacky cake and it was great. Like, uh, if you don't know what a wacky cake is, it basically has no butter or eggs in it. And it's a chocolate cake that tastes Amazing. Tastes like a really yummy brownie almost. Just gonna grab those cookies and I will read that next comment. I want to show you guys something here too. This is the power of different baking pans. So I put this in the oven uh, for 12 minutes, which I've been doing the whole time, so I know that my oven is fully preheated and everything. And look at how much darker it is, just because of the pan difference. So your baking tools matter, for sure. Okay. Okay. What is your rudest experience with the customer? Give all the details. This one, um, I actually cried for a really long time about this one. And I've had more ridiculous customer interactions than this one. But I think the reason that this one was so such a big deal for me was because it was my baking business. It wasn't just at, in a bakery setting. And trust me, in a commercial bakery setting, you are going to run across upset customers all the time. It happens very frequently. It's just the nature of the business. I'm sure any of you guys that work in customer service have experienced something negative 
um, with customers, and that, that's just the way it goes. But when it's your home baking business, I think it feels a little bit more personal because they know without, beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's just you running it. So um, sometimes it, it, it makes you just feel a little bit more sensitive. And this is probably one of the few times that this ever happened. But um, it was over uh, colors, and I said I can make colors similar but not exact. And then I had sent the color of the product to the person like before, and they said it was fine. And then um, later on, they all of a sudden got upset that it wasn't the color that they wanted. And that was like a, like a day or two later, and it was for a really, really important event. And so they were um, yelling at me on the phone, and they were texting me and just saying all these really mean things. And so I, I just kind of... You know, I was like, whatever, I'm just going to get my husband to deliver it for me, and that's going to be the end of it. And honestly, in that situation, what I should have done is I should have delivered it myself, and she was also uh, very rude to my husband as well. And if she had been um, rude to me in person, what I should have done is I should have said, that's fine, I understand you don't want my product, so I'm going to take it, and I will fully refund you, and that's that. You don't have to accept that type of behavior just because you're in a customer service position. And especially because it wasn't my main thing either. And, it was, and that was kind of the turning point where I was like, you know what, I don't need to have this type of stress in my life. Um, but that was just one part of the reason why I stopped selling. But, um, but yeah, and you know what, it doesn't matter how nice, how cordial, how professional you are, these things are going to happen to you guys. <laughs> so um, it's just about being able to handle it. And yeah, so I, now I've learned in that, from that situation. Um, your tips have helped me a lot in my cake business and pricing cakes. I'm glad I found you. Cannot wait to celebrate millions of subscribers on your channel. Um, keep doing this. Oh, thank you. If I, my goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers and I would honestly be thrilled to bits if I could get to 100,000. That would be amazing. I'll turn you around here, guys. Just gonna see the chat. How and why do you post every day? Because it's a blessing that you do. So um, I post every day. <laughs> it's it's a funny reason of why I post every day. One second, I'm just gonna turn on the light too. So I post every day because it originally started out that I posted every day because I had this goal. So if you guys have been here from day one, you've heard about this goal lots of times. Sorry if it bores you. Um, but yeah, I had this goal that I was going to upload every day for a year. And a lot of people in my life said that I wouldn't be able to do it. And uh, and I just, I'm very much a person that keeps promises to everybody, but also to myself. And I think that's really, really important to keep promises to yourself. And so I'm a huge, huge person on follow through. So I did it for every day. I, I did it for a whole year. I uploaded. And I... I've just kind of continued to do it. And I told you guys before that I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to do it. Like I, I, I told you guys that I was going to take more days off and then I had a big musical that I put on and I said I was going to take days off. And I did take um, a day or two off here and there throughout the whole year and a half I've been on YouTube, but I just have stuck with it. And it's, it's almost like it's become part of my day now. And um, you, you'll notice I do post a lot of shorts too as well now, more so than I did before, um, because I want to share with you guys. Like I have things that will pop into my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to share that experience or I'm going to share uh, that idea that I have. And, um, and yeah, so that's why I've been doing it and I'm still enjoying it. So I feel like as soon as I 
stop enjoying it altogether. Like, of course, there's going to be parts that you don't like about anything in life. And as soon as that happens where it's like every day and I just don't have joy anymore, I will probably um, stop uploading as frequently. But so far, yeah, I've just been, I've been able to work it in my day and it's not taking away too much time. So that's why I've continued to do it. And how do I do it? Well, I have a very, very supportive husband. Incredibly supportive. Like, he is happy to see me happy and and will take care of the kids for me will uh do the dishes for me and like will back me up in any way shape or form so that really really helps and that's why i'm able to do a lot of the things that i'm able to do and i also do a lot of edit like the other day we had friends over uh, for the first time in a very long time and i did like all of my editing just chilling with them did some editing and uh, and I went upstairs for like 20 minutes, did some voiceovers and then um, I gave, I then I put the video and that was my palette knife video actually, that one. So I've really come up with different ways to, to just make things easier on myself for uploading. Hopefully that answers your question. Sorry, that was very long winded. <laughs> Let me check the other comments here. What is most what is the most important tip you can say about starting your own business? I think it kind of coincides with what I just said. Keep promises to yourself. Make goals that are realistic. So Okay, it's kind of like on a YouTube channel. I see this a lot with um, up and coming YouTubers or YouTuber people that are striving to be YouTubers. Well, they'll say, "I want to, um, I want to get 50 subscribers by the end of this month." Well, that's really hard. Like to say you want to get X amount of subscribers. Bye, Lisa. Have a good sleep. Um, that that you want to get x amount of subscribers because that's something that's not in your control you can't make somebody you know click the button to say subscribe so just like goals like that when you're doing your baking business i think it's really great to make goals like i want to make a cake that i'm super proud of that has super straight edges or something like that i know that 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 just is a goal that came up into my head but I want to make a goal to output cakes that I am super happy with and only put out cakes that I'm happy with. I think that is a good goal, but it's not a good goal to say, I want to make it a goal to uh, make $1,000 by the end of this month. Not because I don't think that money goals can be important, but just because you will, you will feel disappointed in yourself if you can't achieve those goals that aren't necessarily in your control, especially in the beginning. Do I do lunchbox cakes? I have. I have done lunchbox cakes. And actually, I have. I have this teeny tiny little four inch that I baked up specifically for lunchbox cakes. I'm going to pop this one out and then I'm going to do a really uh, fun decorating tutorial with that one. I'm sorry, Kendra, not understanding the, <laughs> those questions. Um, all right, guys, how can we support you the most? Your videos have so much value. Honestly, you know, um, liking, sharing, viewing the whole video, all those things really, really help. Um, when I put out merchandise, uh, purchasing that merchandise would be great. But honestly, the comments, the likes, the shares, all of those things are what the YouTube algorithm is looking for. They're looking to see if it's their engagement. And the more engagement there is, obviously, the more that I'm going to be able to output for you guys. And um, already I have some really, i just like holding my tongue because I have such fun things to share with you guys. It's going to come out tomorrow. So I'm super, super excited for that. Um, and yeah, I just thank you so much already for all of your support. And that is why, uh, going back to the likes, shares and all that kind of stuff, that is why my channel is doing well, because you guys are engaging with my content. 
So, yeah. Thanks so much, guys. I think I'm going to end it there. I just have a few more trays of cookies, but I've cut out all my cookies, and I'm so happy I made it to the 68 cookies that I needed to do. So, again, if you guys have questions, I really, really try my best to respond to everything. Um, like I told you guys, though, in a community post, I have been a little bit behind on answering some questions. If you're DMing me on Instagram or if you are messaging me on Facebook, Facebook is probably the worst way um, to get a hold of me uh, because uh, it just gets overcrowded with my own personal Facebook. And so if you want to get a hold of me, Instagram DMs are probably best at SD Bake Shop and also making sure that you comment on YouTube videos. And yes, I will sleep and I will remember to sleep. I'm actually going to go play some Little Big Planet if you guys are into video games. Hello from South Africa. Wow, can't wait for the Royal Ice and Cookies. Yes, I'll be sure to give you guys uh, a full tutorial on all of those things. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, but we all know it kind of means daily. <laughs> and I will see you guys later. Bye.